Everyone, welcome to the Two Edged Sword. I am your host, Latanya Newsom. Tonight, we're doing a one on one interview, which is typically a little different from what we do on every Sunday, uh, Tuesday. Tonight, we have a special guest, Mr. William Stewart. Mr. William Stewart, unbeknownst to a lot of you all that has DM and called and messaged, had no idea that he is the ex husband of the infamous Tiffany. Haddish, world-known comedian, super funny, great woman as we see on the camera. Tonight we're going to get a little in-depth and maybe a lot in-depth with Mr. Stewart and he's going to tell y'all the other side of Miss Tiffany Haddish. William Stewart now has wrote a book, Trust, Lies, and Deceit, that dropped on Amazon August the 8th of this year, actually this month. It was a memoir and a tell-out to Tiffany's book that was published and was a New York Times bestseller in 2017 called The First Black Unicorn, where she dedicated a whole chapter just to the ex-husband. So with that being said, Sister so Stewart, welcome. I, I definitely am grateful that you decided to have this platform for the first time. As you all don't know, this is the first time that William has even opened up and actually told his side of the story in the past few years. So we're going to get in detail. We're going to kind of find out why that is and just kind of see what, what it is that we need to know as the public that we don't know when we're going to the movie theaters and we're sitting at home and we're watching the comedy shows and we're watching these great shows that Tiffany, uh, you know, that she produces, she mm -hmm. stars in, and she's, uh, like I said, amazing uh, woman, what is it that we need to know? The first thing, tell us a little bit about you and then we'll go into the questions. Okay, uh, like I said, my name is William Stewart and uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, I work a um, uh, career, uh, graduated in college from Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. Um, you know, I was a police officer for some years. I uh, left the police department and I started doing uh, environmental health and safety and uh, um, pretty much that's, that's pretty much about me. I go to work, go home and just play golf and stuff. So, so he would be, you like the, the regular average day-to-day -day man that yes. actually married a celebrity. Yes, just day-to-day, <laughs> -day, go to work, go home, play golf, uh, tinker around the house, fix things around the house and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's about it. So I, can, I would say, is it safe to say that the celebrity world may not be quite your thing if you're comfortable being, you know, that the average, you know, American citizen, the day to day, doing what it is, chasing the American dream? Would that be something that you could agree to? Or yes, I mean, I was <clears throat> mainly it was kind of like uh, just being a fish out of water, um, you know. Um, dating and being married to someone that was aspiring to be an actress and a comedian and, and a celebrity. And, you know, even when we used to have discussions sometimes, and I used to always say, <clears throat> you know, pretty much you want to be, you know, chased by TMZ, but my whole, my thing is I just want to be a peaceful home husband without uh, the cameras. Okay. That's interesting to say that, we're going to get into that. First mm -hmm. question, how and where did you meet Tiffany? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Before Tiffany um, became famous, um, I met Tiffany on a. Actually, I, I met on a cruise ship, but actually, I saw her getting on a plane. Um, I was flying from Atlanta to Miami to catch a cruise, and Tiffany flew from LA to Atlanta to catch a connecting flight to Miami. <clears throat> and I was actually sitting on the uh, in the seat when Tiffany walked on the plane. And I, you know, when I saw her walk on the plane, I just said, oh, she's kind of cute, you know, to myself. <laughs> Didn't think anything else about it. And then once we landed in Miami, um, I got my bags and things okay. like that. Sip of this Kool-Aid. Yes, he's a Kool-Aid man. We're not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you the yeah. first time. Yeah, the first time I ever wore Kool-Aid. Right? <laughs> it's Kool-Aid. I haven't wore Kool-Aid in over 20 <laughs> years until now. <laughs> yeah, I got to have my Kool-Aid. But anyway, um, when we got the baggage claim, I had grabbed my bags off the baggage claim, and then I looked over there and noticed Tiffany was waiting on her bags. Mm -hmm. So I put my bags back and walked over there and started talking to her. 
smooth, y'all. Hey, y'all, watch out for them, for them men to snatch them bags back, okay? <laughs> yeah, but so come to find out we was going on the same cruise and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, okay, that's what's up. So, But she did tell me that her ex-boyfriend that she put in a book named Corn. Well, she didn't put his name in there, but she called him Titus. Titus, yeah. okay. And <clears throat> she said he was going to be on the cruise ship, uh, but they don't go together anymore. He just, you know, he, he had already got his ticket and all that other stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's what's up. So uh, that's how I met her. So we was on the cruise ship uh, during September 11th when uh, when the building was getting knocked out of New York. We was actually down in, uh, in Jamaica when that happened. Okay. So let me ask you this. Just fast uh, back up a little bit. So when she informed you of the ex that was going to be on the cruise, mm-hmm. that would kind of tell me that y'all clearly had like this instant connection. Because I mean, if, if it was myself, and I can say most, you know, women men would agree, I wouldn't even disclose that information. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. for what we just met, you just yeah. snatched the bag back on the conveyor belt. Like yeah. who are you? Yeah. So is you guys clearly had an instant connection? Yes, I mean it was just I can tell in talking to her, she was just um, she was just it was her energy. You know, it was just like man, this girl is. You know, just something about her, how she was talking to me and smiling while she was talking to me, and I was just, you know, I, I was smitten. You know? She had me locked from that day on. Um, That's funny. You know what I what I pictured when he said yeah. just her and her energy. Yeah. The the little, the tongue thing I do. I was just thinking like she pick her tongue. You know what? She good. She good with that tongue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, no We're going to get into that too, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she captivated you with yeah. her charisma, her character, her conversation. Yeah. She was super bubbly and just pretty much the Tiffany mm-hmm. we all know yeah. that we see on the screen. Kind yeah. of, you know, with that, right? Yeah. She was the winner when I first met her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was the winner. See, yeah. Tiffany was the winner, y'all. Yeah. Okay. They, yeah. When they know, they just know. Yeah. So y'all get on the plane, y'all now yeah, sitting, y'all, y'all conversing on the plane. No, we didn't converse on the plane. Okay. We conversed, we conversed once we got to baggage claim. Okay. Yeah. And then from baggage claim, y'all get on the cruise ship. On the cruise ship. Okay. And y'all link back up on the ship. How, what yeah. what happened? Well, I mean, actually, I was actually going to go on a cruise with a female. Oh, Lord. Y'all is toxic and, already, yeah. baby. But see, the female <laughs> I was seeing at the time. Uh, I forgot exactly what happened, but she got up a nerve to the point I was like, man, I ain't never mind. I'm going on this cruise. So I had one of my buddies that was a pharmacist at Kroger. So I was like, and somebody had already told me, man, you don't want to go on a cruise with uh, with a female if you ain't married. Because oh. it, basically it's like 2,000 some people on the boat and it's about 18, 1,900 of them went. Mm-hmm. You know, men don't really take vacations and stuff most of the time. But wow. yeah, so I had hit him up and he was like, shit, let go. So we go on a cruise ship, and they had already told us the things that the men are supposed to do is, you know, if you got somebody in the room, which you're supposed to put a sock on the lock. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. We in college, yeah. and we got yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. But you're supposed to have a sock on the lock and all that stuff. So, oh, no. Yeah. That was in college. That yeah. definitely was in college. Yeah. Well, you look good in them. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, we had it planned yeah, out. We were going to have a good time on the boat, which you which, 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 which had a good time. I mean, I, I can't deny that. So whilst we got on the boat, you know, um, I mean, you would see Tiffany all over the place, all over the boat, and uh, you would see him sometimes when well, he'd be running behind her, and um, and you know, and I would have my video camera at the time, so I was vid- I would videotape from across the ship when she would be over there. Everything she was, if I saw our videotape, wow. what, she was, what she was doing, and uh, so one, you know, one even when he he was with her, she would see me, and I'd be like, hey, what's up, Tiffany? I'd be over way across the boat. She would leave him standing over there. And she would come over there and be talking to him. So I'd be videotaping her while she was talking to me, right? And then I can glare up and I can see over there he getting a little upset because she's over there talking to me all the time. But, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And I mean, we just had a, it was just like an instant connection, man. It was just like we enjoyed each other. It was just like her auntie was also on the cruise with her. Okay. And it was just, it just seemed like every time we talked, she would just had, it was just like her eyes lit up and it was just like bubbly when oh. she would talk to me. So that's, like, that's what happened with that. I think, um, when our previous conversations, you had said that you, Tiffany, and the ex actually, you know, did like a skit or something together that yeah. I actually did see online yeah. last week. So, yeah. 
y'all all became? Like, how did that introduction happen? Well, uh, not according to her book. You read her book, it says that, you know, he was mad and, um, you know, I threw my boxes on the stage and stuff like that, which is crazy. I mean, when you read that book, you'd be like, ain't no way in the world that this stuff can happen like this. But anyway, uh, we talked about she was going to be on a talent contest. It was a, it was a cruise people mm-hmm. talent contest. Anybody want to join, you can join this talent contest. So she was going to be dancing like James Brown. And he was going to come up and put the the, the uh, robe over her back. And then we was talking about it. She was like, you ought to go get some boxes and throw some boxes and stuff on the stage. And I was like, ah. And I said, I tell you what, I'm just going to bring my room key while you're doing it. And I'm going to give you my room key. And we planned it out. Right. And uh, so as you saw on my, even on my Facebook page or my videos, mm-hmm. you know, because I was trying to show a lot of videos and things on there that shows that Basically, everything that is in that book, I got audio, and I got a lot of stuff in that in videos that shows you that it ain't true, you know, in her book. So it was just like that video shows that, you know, she said that me and him like got to arguing or something like that afterwards. But you can tell in the video, me and him had no problems with each other. Correct. You know, so that was pretty much it. Okay. It was a, it was a, it was a fun cruise. Yeah, yeah, Besides the September 11th part. Right. Happened. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, definitely, we, that's definitely a memorable time, unfortunate memorable yeah. time for all of us. So, fast forward a little bit, after the cruise, mm-hmm. at some point, you guys still connected and this friendship became some type of relationship. Yeah. All right? Tell us yeah. about that. Well, we, after we, you know, after the cruise, we, we got stuck on the boat uh, during September 11th and the cruise went out and we were stuck at sea. So when we, they finally let us come back into port and after we was off the cruise, uh, they offered, you know, because people couldn't fly. You know, right. they was actually actually starting to back to fly the day after we ported. Right. And so a lot of people had canceled their cruise because of September 11th. So the cruise ship came up with this thing where everybody was there and you said, they, you know, if you wanted to go back out, they was giving you like uh, almost, it was like two or three hundred dollars if you can go back out on another cruise. Okay. And uh, Tiffany stayed for that. But I was like, September 11th, all this stuff going on. I was a police officer at the time. I was actually ready to get home. So, uh, ended up flying back to Georgia the next day when they started letting the flights fly again. Got home. Uh, Tiffany went back out on the cruise, like I said. And, you know, we exchanged numbers. So, we kept contact. We called each other for about a year. And, uh, okay. yeah. And all of a sudden, the calls stopped. You know, I couldn't find them. The calls stopped. And it, and, it, and it bothered me really, you know, after a while. I mean, after a year, stopped. a pen pal. And yeah. I remember I was in third yeah. grade and I had a pen pal. And I couldn't find my third grade pen pal yeah. over yeah. in another But I had all the video of the cruise. I had all the video of the cruise. So, yeah. And, and like I said, because for about a year we talked, man, it was just like instant connection. I mean, you know, I was here in Atlanta and police officer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had a few female friends at the time. But it was just something about her that just had in my mind, like, I just love talking to her. I love being, a, you know, and I want to see her again. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, the uh, the phone the phone call stopped, and come to find out, she uh, she had in a, I guess her and her ex, or, or whatever Titus, um, uh, I don't like calling him Titus because I don't say. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna say corn. We're gonna call him okay, corn. corn. But yeah, that's what she called. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, they had them cost themselves uh, getting back together and things like that, and. Uh, when they got back together, she, you know, she got a number change and all that stuff. Okay, yeah. wow. So then that, but you know, yeah. nothing. Destiny was clearly in the picture because yeah. then after her and the ex get together, mm-hmm. at some point you guys came back together with yeah. a reconciliation. Yeah, that was me. That was you. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, so mainly. You know, over the it was like three, four years. You know, exactly how many years it was, but. I could never, you know, I was, you know, that person was always in the back of your mind, like, man, what happened to her? What happened to her? So, um, I ended up one day. It was, it was kind of crazy. I was actually staying in Savannah, Georgia, at this time, um, and um, the female that I was seeing at the time, uh, we call ourselves breaking up, and I was, man, I was all upset, and I was just like, man. And every time, you know, I would think about it, I'd be like, man, I wonder what happened to her. What happened right. to her? And then, at the same time, I'm laying on the bed. And all of a sudden, this show comes on while I'm sitting there. Mm. Up there and it comes on and says, Bill Bellamy, who got jokes? And that was a, that was a, a amateur, that? that was an amateur comedy yes. show where people, amateurs go on there. 
And so I'm laying there, next thing you know, I was going to flip it because I really didn't get into comedy. You know, I was going to flip the channel, but I was like, man, I need something, man. What are they going to talk about? Right. So the guy came up and he was talking. I was like, all right, man. Well. So when I was going to flip the channel, next thing you know, they said, the next person coming up over there is Tiffany. And I'm like, okay. It's not thanking Tiffany. Right. Hey. And she runs out there, hey. <laughs> and I was like, I sit up at the end of the bed. He's like, I, there is a guy, right? No, no, last time I saw her, she worked at the airlines. And I'm like, I'm looking at the head TV like, she looked at me like that voice. Right. That voice, I'm like. And then she came out and she started, hey, I'm Tiffany. And so I sit up at the bed and I started looking for the little mold. The little, right. And I was like, that's damn Tiffany. <laughs> and she was on there trying to, you know, you know, trying to overcome and come. So... After after the show, I was just like so excited because I haven't seen it since then. So me, at the time, I'm a private investigator also. Mm-hmm. So you know, I did a few things, and then I found out yeah, right. I found out a telephone number and all that stuff. And once I found out a telephone number, I instantly called. <laughs> as soon as I called, I said, "Hey, what's up?" You know, hey. And then she said, "Who is this?" I said, "This is William." She said, "William from Atlanta." Instantly. Okay. And I was like, "Yeah." So we got back to shop. We got back to talking, and it was just. Every day we were just talking, 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 talking. Uh, she was telling me what happened and why we lost contact, talking, talking. So she was intrigued on how I found her. Right. And uh, I told her. And she made the comment, well, damn, if you found me, you need to find my dad. I said, I find him, I find him, ain't no problem. She said, you can't find him. I've been looking for him all my life. And I've been doing this and doing that and doing right. that. And nobody can find him. I said, you give me a little bit of information, I'll find it. And generally, you know, somebody needs me to find somebody, I can find them usually in 10 or 15 minutes, you know. And uh, All you ladies looking for a husband. <laughs> well, <laughs> all you guys looking for a wife. Yeah. Well, if you look, if you know where they're at, uh, and their names and their information. Exactly, right, right. Uh, so I found them, and it, well, it wasn't it wasn't easy as I thought it was going to be, but it took, and man, I was just so trying to find him because I was just trying you know, to make her happy. Surprised. Yeah, because she said she hadn't seen him since she was three. Mm. So, you know, but all this time while I'm trying to find him, you know, we still talking and everything. And, I, and I'm calling everywhere every day just taking phone calls. So, uh, we had made plans to, uh, you know, meet up, meet up again. And she was trying to come in. She was trying, actually trying to get into the movies and stuff like that. So I'm being like the voice of the encouragement, like, okay, yeah, you're gonna get this part of, yeah, you do this and do that and do this. Right. And uh, so um, that was pretty much it as far as uh, when the, before finding her dad. And um, so I remember in the book, in Tiffany's book, she mentioned that she said. If I find your dad, you have to marry me. Yeah. So is that in the book? You know, like I tell people, you know, even when we was going through uh, litigation about that book, I mean, the book it has a lot of parts of the truth. It's kind of like when you watch a TV movie and it Mm -hmm. says you something in the in the writing that this is this book is um you know whatever and and, and parts of it is fiction. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that was like embellished and just made to be. But uh. No, that wasn't actually how it was said. You know, we was talking, talking, talking. We, like I said, we jived from day one, day one right. and then we talked for a year. So we, we was, we was, we was just like smitten with each other. And then once we got back together, and how we got back together, we was just looking at it like this got to be God. That's what we was thinking. Right. And then when she was talking about trying to find a dad, I said, well, look, we've been talking a year here. We've been talking now a few months. We just talked to each other constantly throughout the day. And then I said, I'm still going to find your dad. And she was like, you still ain't going to find him. You're going to find him. I said, I'll tell you what. All this stuff from our past, all this stuff that we came back to and we talk every day, I said, if I find your dad, thinking like God put us together anyway, if I find your dad, you're going to have to marry me. And she was like, okay, okay. You know, it wasn't like, I'm finding your dad and you marry me. Who married somebody to find your dad? Well, that's crazy. But that was just, and the thing about it, like I have to tell people, that book was not written by Tiffany. Right. It was written by a guy named Tucker, and Tucker uh, was banned from banned from Twitter. He, he he just one of those guys that says a lot of things that get up on the people's skin, and so a lot of that stuff was yeah. written by him, and uh, so that's pretty much what happened with that. It wasn't like oh, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You know, I'm going to marry him now because I promised him that I'm going to marry him and find my dad. Uh-huh. Yeah. See, our conversation, it was just the connection. So, yes. you guys end up getting married. What year was Well, I, when I found that, well, yeah. Because you did find a dad. I did find a dad. And that story, it was kind of cool. We, you know, she called me one morning crying. And I'm like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? My dad called me. And I was so happy. That he called her, and then I said, "How you know?" She said, "Cause he can tell us some things that she don't want to remember." So I was so glad that I actually found him for it, and they and they reconnected. And then right after that, uh, I decided, you know, like I told, her, I said, "Since we get married, you know." And at the time, you know, right before the end too, you know, she had just got an apartment. And I was helping her with this, and you know, sending money from Georgia and helping with that. And then I said, "You know what? Since we're gonna get married, I'm just gonna move out there." So. I said, but I got to get a job first. I'm the type I can't just, mm-hmm. the comedians and the people in they got a fortitude because I can't live like that. I got to have a job before I go. Mm-hmm. And so that's what happened before I moved to California. Uh-huh. So I'm going to, I know the answer is to be safe to say. And let me know if the comments are that in y'all playful conversation mm-hmm. with one another and the connection y'all had together, yeah. it was like she was in agreement with, hey, let's, we might as well do this anyway. Yeah. So, uh, a playful conversation, connection conversation turned into reality. Yeah. Y'all, uh, uh, y'all eventually got married. Yeah. So after the marriage, um, the early parts of mm-hmm. the marriage in relationship, mm-hmm. how was it with Tiffany? It was interesting because I, I, I didn't when I first moved to California before we got married. Uh, when you when you when you don't stay with someone every day. And you get to see some sides of her that you didn't really know. And once I moved to California, I was still in love with her. And but I noticed some things that I never got the chance to notice. You know, when you visit or see each other yeah. for a few days, no, like, you know, the crying, the uh, you know, the, the the bubbly person go in the restroom, come back, now they're crying, or uh, they go in the restroom, they come back, now they're angry. You know, just seeing all the different phases of stuff, and I'm like, wow, I didn't know what was going on, you know. So, and I was joking with my mom one day, I called her, and I was like, something ain't right, you know, and I was like, she was like, what? I said, mom, all y'all crazy, but something ain't right. <laughs> you know, and I was joking with my mom when I said that, I said, because I ain't never seen somebody to move swing so quick like that. Right. And, uh, but that was the most, that was, but that was, that was something that I learned how to deal with. Right. Yeah. So I also, and um, doing research and the team coming up with a port of, or a large port of the the personality changes and the mood swings, etc. Can you tell us what that is contributed to? Because this is something that nobody really knows. And I want you to be the one to tell them what is it that you discovered and so you can see in how it was dealing with that situation. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was it was mainly once when she was getting ready to go to Korea to do a, a comedy show uh, for the troops, and she had got this little gig. And while she was gone, you know, I was I was actually flying back and forth from L.A. to a, from Atlanta to L.A. Probably I was going out at least twice a month, and uh, on the weekends and stuff. And when she was gone, when she was gone, you know, I'm like, man, something going on. So. Then I ran across some stuff in her apartment that pretty much let me know that you know she had had a little time in the hospital and, and things like that. And uh, so she was a little upset when I came back and I confronted about you know some of the uh, prescriptions and stuff I found and, uh, and 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 some of the stuff I found. So and then she explained to me what happened then and um, I just you know I had already decided you know I'm living out there you know so. Um, you know what they say uh, for the sickness and in health. I, mean, I, 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 I was in it. I was in it to win it. You know, I was in it regardless. Because one of the things I used to always tell her, even while we was married, is that I used to always tell her, even when she would go through her little episodes or stuff, and I would tell her I would never leave her because of the fact that I said, if you get hit by a car, if you get hit by the car, you were paralyzed. Because I was so in love with. Her. I told her I would never leave you because of the fact that I could still hold you. Right. You know, so. That was kind of like some of the things that I went through. A lot of people sometimes used to always say too that I was angry or he don't never say nothing. He's mean. He just, and a lot of people didn't know what I went through before we got to where we were and going. And that's what we want to tell. So, and I know yeah. they're thinking like, 
okay, women do have, you know, personality changes, the time of the month, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I like this. This is different. So yeah. this would be, and I know since we we telling it all, and this is part, which is also, again, in the book as well, it was basically, it's a mental disorder that Tiffany has, and which yeah. mental disorder is that? Well, I don't really want to go into detail about the, that part of it, uh, but, uh, you know, she she's she seen the, she seen doctors, and we seen the, we seen the doctor together and stuff. So, uh, but that didn't that change didn't make me that didn't change my feelings or never think that make me think that I want to get a divorce. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you said, from sickness and health. So yeah. that would be one thing, which is is honorable. That's what a man should do yeah. is stick by. Do you think that this mental health issue contributed to uh, anything that you said now had y'all ended up in divorce? What are the times that mm -hmm. at a point the mental condition got out of hand, unbalanced, uncontrollable, and it caused friction yeah. in, in your home? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you know, any, any relationship, any marriage, anything like that is going to have its ups and downs. It's going to, uh, you're going to have disagreements and things like that. But I used to always tell her even before we got divorced, you know, and I still even told her after divorce, really there was no reason for the divorce. Right. Uh, and I used to always tell her, your, your best friends, them and they, their husbands have way more disagreements than you and I have. Uh, only time Tiffany and I ever really disagreed on stuff, 95% of the time it was because she was drunk and I wasn't, you know. and. When you when you when you married to a person that drinks as much as she does, and uh, you know like you know smoke, and then you know you got med you got medications and right, stuff we take, right. and you you doing all this stuff, it's like it's it's like I tell people because I don't drink, and I never really ever drink, um, besides the time she poured some stuff in my thing and I didn't know it was alcohol in it, but. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. She, she wanted you to turn up, right? Oh, she's doing it all. She was, man, she was, we had a lot of fun together, but uh, I didn't drink, so it's like a lot of times you're walking around behind a person that's drink, drinking, intoxicated, and especially if she hadn't had nothing to eat. I, man, I, if she would be drinking a lot, I'd be like, hey, you gotta eat, you gotta eat. Because if she, if she, she, if she was drinking on the end of the stomach, she was gonna get noxious. And it's like chasing a chasing a person around, a sober person chasing this person around everywhere mm -hmm. they go. And you, as a husband, you follow them around because you don't mm -hmm. want her to do anything crazy or hurt herself, or you know. And that was that was difficult. But when she was when she was sober, we very seldom argued about anything, anything. Right. That's it. So it's kind of the mental health and or you know the the drinking etc. Yeah. would contribute to. Y'all disagreements. Other than that, y'all was like the match made in heaven, right? Oh, yeah. So you guys got the divorce. Um, also found somewhere where it says you guys got married twice. Is that true? That's or? false. Oh, okay, because yeah. I was saying, I was like, I don't. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, then that's false. Yeah, no, nah, that's false. We never. We, we got married. We had one wedding and we had one divorce. Uh, but the thing. Uh, I don't know whoever wrote the book. They probably saw where uh, Tiffany filed for divorce, but we never went through with it. Right. And <clears throat> then, you know, she, she, you know, I don't even know if she actually. Well, yeah, she went to the courthouse, but it never, we never went right. to court. We, and basically, she didn't follow up on it. Right. So that was like the third, second year. So after that, we we were still together. And then she filed. She actually filed for the divorce um, about three years after that. I read somewhere where it was saying that Tiffany was pregnant and yes. that was probably your child, I'm yes. sure. Yes. And yeah, she didn't have no time. Yeah, didn't have no time. So yeah. what was it really you forced her to get a miscarriage? <laughs> or, I mean abortion <clears throat> and she miscarry or like what happened? No. Tiffany I, Tiffany never was abused by me, never I have never slapped a woman in my life. I have never hit a woman in my life. I have never punched a woman in my life, ever. And I don't even use the word, the B word for us when I'm angry. And even Tiffany said at one time, I even, even on a video, like, you know, remember that time you called me? A, a, well, you called me, you said I was acting B, and 
And that one time, you know, she kept emphasizing that one time, and I'm like, well, why you didn't tell Tucker Max to put that one time in that book instead of having all these, having me look like a monster in that book? Right. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, she had it. Basically, this is what happened. Tiffany got pregnant, and it was not like something we wasn't, it ain't like we planned to get pregnant, but I mean, we're married. Right. We're having, exactly. And, you know, pretty much everybody knows as far as when she comes on, She's a very sexual person. It's 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 pretty much every day, uh, and you gonna get pregnant if, if you know if you're married. How's it gonna be sexual? Like, well, I'm you know, I'm just saying, saying you hear her, everything she does. Yeah, is, now she, I mean, she yeah. should get paid for the grapefruit moment. Well, you know, we were gonna I talk about that one too. I would have yeah. paid her myself, but I didn't yeah, yeah. have a little help. We was <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, that's one thing I can say. It, it, you don't get a whole lot of rest with her. You know what I'm okay. saying? So. Uh, and then she got pregnant, so I was happy, like, damn, my wife's pregnant. And then I used to always joke with her, like, man, what would it be like to have Tiffany and a little Tiffany running around behind it? And, 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 and you know, and I and like she would be like, well, I got it. I'm trying to get my career off the ground. I'm like, to me, I was excited because I was so in love with Tiffany. And I, in my mind, I just imagined, and I used to always tell her, imagine a little daughter with a little mold in the same spot. Ah! And she's coming up like, Mama said this. And I'm like, you know. And it, to me, it was just like, at the time, I'm married. You know, I'm finally happy. Yeah. And I'm like, man, it, that's what it was. And then uh, her agents at the time, not agents, but managers and things. Mm-hmm. Agents, not the agents. We had one of them that every time we would go to her her, her, her office, she would raise his shirt up and be like, you're not pregnant, are you? not pregnant, are you? You know, she would rub her stomach and... You know, I, I had to deal with this so much, you know, it's not right for you right now to get pregnant, Tim. You can't have any babies, you know. And they used to always stay too while we was married because they didn't want us to get married. They would say, you'll be a millionaire if you were single. I heard that so many times. Oh, wow. I heard that so many times. I mean, it, they would say it to my face. Yeah, I mean. So, anyway, uh, when Tiffany got pregnant, I was actually happy because I didn't think she, you know. And then, like I told her then, you know. I'm a single parent anyway. I got, you know, my, I've been my son since he was two, two, two months, I mean, 18 months old, and he was with us. So I'm like, shit, if, 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 what's that going to stop anything? Yeah. I'll be here with these kids while you, you still live in your dream. Mm-hmm. So she, 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 I couldn't talk her out of it. Basically, she went to get an abortion. And uh, I took her, to, I took her, I didn't want to. Um, I talk, I tried to talk out of it for months. And even, I even got text messages from her to this day. Where she said she misses our dead baby, and I even texted her back oh, and said, oh. "I tried everything in my power to save it." So uh, I took her to the abortion clinic, and uh, I actually cried all the way there. We get there. I had I didn't even know they did this at the time, uh, but this was around 2009, I guess, or eight, eight, nine. But they had this thing where they give her three. They gave her a shot, and the shot basically killed her heart. Mm-hmm. And then she had to go back home and insert three pills. So when she did that, you know, I was, I was, I, you know, I drove back home. I didn't say nothing to her. And the hardest thing about it was when she did it, she laid on the bed, <clears throat> and then she comes and says, you know, it's time for me to lay on the bed and insert pills. So I had a little garden out backyard. So I went outside because I didn't, even, you know, I really wasn't even really right, talking right. to her at the time. I was just kind of upset. Because, you know, she just had got the shot, and I'm thinking, like, God, man. So I cannot believe the fact that once she inserted those pills or whatever, I guess it makes them give a contraction. <laughs> and they, I ain't thinking nothing about them outside. And we have a little swimming pool in the backyard and all this stuff. Uh, yeah. And uh, Tiffany comes to the woman in the bathroom, put side the window. And basically, she just lay, lay out the window, where him? The baby's in the toilet. Do you want to see it before I flush it? Oh. That's the God's kind of truth. And I looked at looked I looked at the one and I said, and I, and I you know, I said, hell no. Just like that. <laughs> I yeah. mean, like if you sitting here and I know we all watch. Yeah. And it's like that's a that's kinda like a yeah. a part in a movie. But they didn't put they yeah, yeah. But and it's not in there. Well, yeah. Like I could see I could see her saying that. It's oh, but unfortunate, she did. but she did. And in, in a comedy, like was she serious or was it in a comedy? No, way? it wasn't in a comedy way. It was she was actually it. saying it in a way. It was kind of like a. It was kind of like you know because sometimes she don't be thinking how she say stuff. It wasn't like she was saying it in a comedy way. She was saying it in a way like, 
a memorial. Right. Like right. you want to see it. Like you want to see it before we play. And I'm like, I said, hell mm-hmm. no, because I was already upset that she got the shot the day before. Right. You know. So, but yeah. And then in the book, that wasn't Tiffany. That was the guy that wrote the book, and the, and the people that wrote the book. That hey, okay, well that's kind of boring. You had an abortion. Okay, he beat I, you, didn't hurt the bad. Yeah. You know, I mean, all that stuff is embellished so, to the point to right. make it. Yeah. So that you the bad guy, but then yeah. I'm thinking like. <laughs> I mean, you gotta make the superstar look good, you know. What I mean? But even right. as yeah. a woman, and you see women here like we that we like, oh, uh, you know, like yeah. And my baby's in the toilet type thing, like yeah, we yeah. we gonna have to yeah. Yeah. Know. And what are you gonna see at <laughs> yeah, that's, eight, twelve that's weeks or whatever? Like, you ain't let them, you know. Mm. I know you said you mentioned some of the stars. Uh, you felt bullied, so to speak, by some of the stars that. Um, how did that? How was that life? Like, did you feel like they were, you know, at you because you wasn't one of them? That wasn't the side. Like, what what happened in the industry while you were married to Tiffany that made you feel like you were being antagonized? And did you ever defend yourself to any of those persons? I don't understand. I mean, as far as <clears throat> I don't understand the question. So there was there was someone like that said that you felt bullied mm-hmm. by the stars like and I want to say that they were making it seem like that was part of why you wasn't so gun ho to be in the industry mm-hmm. so I'm saying like was that because they felt like hey he's not one of us or you can do better or did that even take place how was it in your opinion I mean it was it was I'm, I'm just a, a country boy from Georgia so you know I enjoyed like when we would have some of her friends and comedians would come to the house and me personally I love to cook so I would cook for all of them. Uh, I can imagine one day, uh, like little Ray, y'all know who he is, mm-hmm. he comes to the house one day and I had cooked this pot roast. And you know he a man and, and Tiffany had said, uh, you know, well, when you cook the pot roast, and you know he a man, he went, like, oh, right, you know, right. right there, right there. So he sat down at the table because he had spent the night, he had spent the weekend with us or something, he had came in from Chicago or something. He had spent the weekend with it, so I had just finished cooking this roll, so he sat down at the table, and then he got a little piece, you know, let me get a little piece of that roll. Yeah. And then, <laughs> he started eating, he had a little piece there, he was like, hey. he said, give me some more of that roll, and then he looked over at me and said, why you eat the guy like that? Right, <laughs> I was like, listen, that's Yeah, but I mean, uh, I mean, he was cool, I, I always liked him, uh, but I mean, that's the thing I like doing. I like cooking. I like I like doing things, entertaining, doing barbecues at the house and stuff like that. I really wasn't into the to the, the Hollywood stuff, you know, because I one of the things that she used to always say about me to me or whatever when she would ask me certain things, she was like, "You the smartest guy I know," and she would ask me stuff, um, and she would and I would always tell her because I I feel like I can read people being police officers and things right. like that. I can tell, you know, I, I can read, I can kind of read people, so I would tell her like. Uh, no, nah, he's a snake. He's a snake. I can tell when a man smiled mm-hmm. in my face and trying to stick me in the back, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. so, yeah, I had, yeah. And it's funny I say that because I had one guy that, you know, it was a comedian that I didn't really care for at all, and she knew it. And then, you know, when they had to turn off all this evidence when we had went to litigation about her book. And it was so funny because they sent so many emails. They sent so much stuff. Some of the emails were her personal emails. Right. And that same dude I never liked. Uh-huh. And the emails he was sending them, and I'm like, I'm reading them, and, this, and they said, this, I don't know why they sent us this stuff, doing all these emails, that, but I'm like, yeah, he was a snake, you know, he was trying to get a tip. smile in your face. We supposed to be homeboys right. from the Georgia. See, smile in your face, but he in the back door still trying to get him, you know. Uh-huh. And I was like, and see, that's why I was like, I told, I, I could tell the ones I don't uh-huh. like me on them. So, uh, but that was uh-huh. it. Okay, so what is actually true? in Tiffany's book. They're like there must be there's is there any parts you feel true where you say, yeah, pretty much all of these things happen. They just happen at a way lesser degree or didn't happen that way. Like I, I wanna I wanna particularly talk about the choking. But the choking I got yeah. there was during sex. Yeah. There was also yeah. choking that was because she was dialoguing with one of the fellow comedians yeah. at a location and you, you know, kind of grabbed and said it's time to go, grabbed about the neck and, no. you know, no. pretty much. It, that, didn't happen. that didn't happen that way. We, I think it was that was in the Montreal, was that mm-hmm. in the book? 
and we was in Canada. And people, you know, all the comedians there in Canada, now if you read that thing, you see it's all this stuff I'm doing, ain't nobody calling the police. If I'm doing this in front of hundreds of thousands of people, ain't nobody calling the police. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody jack you up. Ain't nobody jack me up or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Jack you up. And, you know, so I mean, come on. When you read this stuff, you can realize you ask yourself those questions. Like, why nobody stop it? Because it didn't happen that mm-hmm. way. And the thing about it, people didn't understand that at the time, when you live with a person and you know they have the issues, uh, the issues as far as the medication, the issues as far as the alcohol, and then when she's drinking and not having no food on her stomach, uh, they didn't understand what was going on. So when I'm following her around, is because I'm trying because I already know I can I know what she's going right. through. So and she would she would she would do say crazy stuff like that and we you know she tried to say I had, I did not choke her I grabbed her in the elevator because she was I was I was running around with her at the at the thing trying to like man why are you running around this place like a kid she, she was, was man she was so she was she would get behind a uh, like a tree inside the hotel like she did a hide and go seek or something <laughs> you know. <laughs> but yeah, so when I grabbed her by the arm, all of a sudden, in the book, I'm snatching up in the elevator and all this other crazy stuff. I'm like, what if all this stuff happened and all these comedians sitting there watching me and nobody tried to stop me? You know, it don't make no sense. <laughs> and then even when it... Huh? I said, or go by me. Yeah, or go by me. Yeah, or another thing. How... I, it, it, it just didn't, it just didn't make sense when they when when they say things like this and then people label me as a monster because of these things and and it, and, it, and, it, and none of that stuff never happened like that. Right. Yeah. And I guess we could say say to say that of course when mm-hmm. it comes to you know putting yourself on a platform yeah. becoming you know a celebrity whether it be music yeah. well, comedy. Well, another thing I was gonna say. <laughs> Even if people read the book and they read the thing where she says, I called my friend, I, I skyped my friends back, and, and they said, what's wrong with your face? Why you got all these bruises in your face? Now, this was in 2009, 2010. Skype didn't come out in 2012. When you Google it, it tells you Skype didn't come out in 2012. So how did you Skype these people? You know what I'm saying? All that stuff didn't make sense. She's the next tail on the walkie-talkie. Yeah, well, walkie-talkie, but Skype, they saw the bruises on my face. Come on, man. Tucker Max. The guy that wrote the book. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, even with that, with having a team and writing a book, where does Tiffany take accountability and responsibility for the things that were actually put in that book that were untrue about you? And, you guys, I did see a video with Tiffany saying these things did not happen. Yeah. Well... It was, you know, I she read it in the audio book yeah. one way, and when it actually came out in the book, it was another way. Yeah. So I did see, I've seen documentation more than one source with her actually going live and saying, and then yeah. it was like, at the end, she was like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I mean, in that, I mean, she had already sold herself. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So. When this happened, when the book came out, before the book came out, I was actually, you know, before all this stuff, me and Tiffany still together, you know, I flew from Atlanta all the way to L.A., rented a truck. Now, she gave me the money to fly to L.A. and rent the truck. And then I drove seven hours way up above Sacramento to unpack her dad's apartment uh, for her, her because she was working on the last OG. I did all this stuff. Now, who's going to have a some person to abuse you to do all that for you while you're working on the SOG and all this other mm-hmm. stuff? And then I drove this stuff back to California. I went through this stuff, siphoned through this stuff in her dad's apartment, sending her pictures or stuff. You want this, you want this. You know, I'm going through needles because he was a diabetic or something. But I'm, I'm finding needles everywhere. So she's telling me, be careful, be careful. And I'm sending this stuff. So when I, I packed up all the stuff, I took stuff to the dump. And then I drove all the way back to L.A., seven, eight hours took the stuff to her apartment and then flew back to Atlanta. You know, and during this time I'm doing all this stuff, she's, she started writing a book right after that. Uh, and right when the book get ready to publish, they didn't even give me a notice ahead of time. And during this time when I'm doing all this stuff with Tiffany, we still kicking it, we still, you know, seeing each other here and there. You know, I'm thinking, you know, we still, you know, we divorced, but we still a team. You know, we still together, I'm still doing it, we still doing stuff like this. And then all of a sudden she calls me and tells me, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm fixed to get a job back in California because I'm in Georgia. So now I get a job back in California. So 
at the time she called me when I'm about just getting to California and tells me that, you know, she's going to write a book. And I was thinking at the time, like, dang, this is a little too early for a book. And you just did a girl trip, you know. And I didn't know nothing about it. So all of a sudden, I'm out of, I'm out of L.A. fixing to do an interview. And she said, well, the book's coming out. And she said, uh, I'm going to tell you now, you're going to be upset. Mm-hmm. And I started laughing. I'm like, upset about what? And she said, oh, you're going to be upset. I said, what did I want? Because I'm thinking, if you look at all her comedy on, mm-hmm. she all she did is talk about me when we was married. That's all her comedy was around. She ain't never said none of this stuff. So I'm thinking, the little stuff you have said, that's funny to me. I'm going to be mad about this comedy. Mm-hmm. But that book did not say it was comedy. When the first thing she said, when it came out, it took me probably two days to read them 39 pages. Because I, I actually read, man, I just broke down. I'm like, Who, what is this? You know, so... Uh, that whole chapter is pretty much embellished. And, and the whole chapter, I think it's titled Ex Husband, yeah. is all about you. Yeah. Things y'all, um, you know, went through or didn't actually happen the, yeah. the way they said. But then that's part of, you know, saying, like, this is what you feel like the team needed to do to push the sales in a book. Well, that's what, that was turnover and some of the, the evidence that turn, had to turn over when we was. Uh, yeah, but it, it, that, that was that's pretty much in the book. In the book, also it shows you a couple of the snips, it snippets where you know they they basically uh, one of her good friends even wrote a statement that's in the book that's saying that hey, Tim didn't even want to do this. Mm-hmm. They coerced her into doing it. You know, the people in the team coerced her because it was it would be good for book sales. Right. And right. Tiffany pretty much felt like you know think that, uh, I thought that I was going to go along with it. But like I was trying to explain to him, I got a career. I ain't just a, you know, I ain't just a man at, at McDonald's and, mm-hmm. and, and and working on the French fries. I, you know, I got I, people are gonna look at me like, do we want him to be the face of our organization and stuff like that? So, you know, that was rough. It was yeah. it was rough. Cause that was my next question. What what was your first reaction to the book and the allegations made towards you, like? How did you feel? What is your first thought if you remember what I got on the phone with Tiffany? I said, man, and, and I mean I mean we went back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, Tiffany, what? And this is right here. So then at my from I what I started thinking is when Tiffany did the little video, like some of this stuff was, you know, she had posted. But then she took it down right quick. Now anybody will tell you if she took it down right quick, the team, somebody come back and said, Take that down. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but she tried to come. In my opinion, she tried because I told her. I said, before, even before we got legal this stuff in it, I felt like me and Tiffany could have handled this just like we handled mm-hmm. anything else. And when I was calling her, and she kept telling me stuff like, "Be patient, this is gonna blow over. Be patient, your blessings gonna come." And she kept saying things like this, and I'm like, "Man, I'm getting calls. I'm getting, I'm getting groupie threats. You know, Instagram threats. I'm getting, I'm getting all this crap going on." And I'm like, and she's like, "It's gonna blow over. It's gonna blow over." And, and and so then attorney started hitting me up. Mm. And uh, I didn't really want to get an attorney. You, you know, because I wanted me and Tiffany to handle this like we handled everything else. Did you use Russell Simmons' attorney? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, that, you know, like I said, I got a couple of attorneys here hitting me up, and I was just like, look, now nah, me and Tiffany are going to handle this. We're going to take care of this. Because I'm thinking, you know, you can get, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, maybe you can get a letter or something to say, hey, some of this stuff is made up for the sales right. of the book. I'm thinking me and her can work this out ourselves. But then all of a sudden, when I was talking to her, the conversation changed. Hey, what's up, what's up? Be patient, your blessings are coming. And then I can even say something like, you know what, that dress you got on is beautiful. She would say something, it sounded like a lawyer talking. And I'm like, this ain't Tiffany talking to me. I mean, anything I would say to her, she would say something back, and I'm like, this ain't Tiffany. Wow. So then I was like, okay, something up. So when the attorneys would hit me up, and then all of a sudden, uh, that's when Mike Sterling hit me up on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, he said something about, because I didn't know who he was. He said, hey, me and my people uh, want to talk to you. And I texted him back on Instagram, like, who, who are you and who are your people? Right. And he was like, well, I'm Russell Simmons. And he said, I'm, I'm Mike Sterling, an attorney. I represent Russell Simmons. And I was like, okay, we, you know, I'm thinking in my mind, well, if he run, 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 right. call me, well, let's talk. So that's how that, that's how that happened. He he found me on Instagram, and I was told that uh, uh, I was told that his his wife I actually heard me on uh, okay. on V103 with Ryan Cameron, and she told him and he hit me up. 
Okay. So where do you feel like the relationship started to go south? Like, at what point did y'all go from, uh, this is my wife, I want to have this baby? You could... Because clearly from us listening to you, Mm -hmm. the vision you had is what a lot of women wish they had. This man that looks at them and say, ah, this is my person. This is a man. Nothing she can do wrong. You know what I mean? Right. Nothing she can do wrong. She was, see, like Tiffany was your everything. 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 And and then to play the role, because I listen and Mm -hmm. I know we've had conversations more than this where you say you you see you took on more of the feminine role in the relationship Mm -hmm. with being the you know being like let me make sure that your meals are prepared and that sure i'd be like you did the the manly thing the master thing you protected her especially when you know she was you know not at her best self But then, literally, I never heard you say Tiffany cooked meals or Tiffany cleaned or Tiffany up in and and we had guests over and she was the host or it was it's like like these are the things that you did and you allowed her to go and, outside and, I the enjoyed home it. and work. You know what I mean? And I enjoyed it. I mean, the thing about it, Tiffany, I always say she's a professional vacuum cleaner, mm-hmm. but that's the only thing she really did. Uh, Cause she was, you know, the thing was funny about it. I love to cook, so I cooked. It, Tiffany would call me at work and say, "I took this stuff out the freezer when you cook it when you get home." I, I said, "No problem." <laughs> and Tiffany would be at home a lot of times in the daytime, so Tiffany would vacuum. You know, yeah, she didn't do really laundry. But I did the laundry. I did, I did all the chores at the house mostly, um, and that's it. I like I said, I cooked, I cleaned, and Tiffany was. Like I tell women a lot of times, men are very simple. It, ain't, it don't take a lot of a lot to keep us at home. And Tiffany never let me. Very seldom did I ever have to beg. Right. Very seldom did I ever get no. And most of the time, I'll be like, damn, I wish she'd go to sleep. <laughs> you know. So a lot of times, people, I mean, I, that would make me. That would make me. I would man. So she did go to the grocery store and get grapefruit. I'm sure. <laughs> Tiffany's a Pisces. She's a Pisces and or a Scorpio or something, right? You think no, you uh, right? No, she's a sad. She's sad. I know you said she was a sad. Look, you see her sad yeah. hair. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, she got she got a lot of she got a lot of water in her choices. I think sad is a born and if yeah. she's I can't say that, you know, out of all things like I said. And she never I you know, it was I enjoyed cooking, you know. And then the thing about Tiffany, she didn't like to do laundry. So, you know, when she started getting a little money coming in let me I tell you what say, Tiffany does. Tiffany was prepared Tiffany, to I love to do the laundry. You can too. Well, I love to do the laundry because when you do the laundry, you're going to find money in the pocket. The... And Tiffany, I think sometimes she would actually leave the money in the pocket for me doing the laundry. You know what I'm saying? Because I would go through all the pockets and I'm telling you, man, I would come out of the laundry room because, like I tell her, money in the pocket is mine. And I would find, you know, I could do the laundry, I'm going to find $100 minimum <laughs> in the pockets. You know what I'm saying? So I enjoyed that part of it. I cooked all the time, man. I love to see her smile when she would, when I cook because she loved my cooking. And uh, and it's funny. She said that that's what she missed about me when we talked like a few years ago. She missed my my sex and my cooking. That's all I said. You didn't miss did. you didn't miss my you didn't miss me holding you or missing me making sure that you were safe at home. But you know that's what she said. She missed the cooking and the sex. Sound yeah. like a man. Yeah. Money is, I mean, yeah. money, food, and sex. Yeah. But, right? Yeah. But, I mean, and I and I know I've said this. I'm going to say this. Yes, we are here with this. Let me clear my name. Yeah. Let everybody know that these things didn't happen. Mm-hmm. You know, I, this is not the type of man I am. I'm a man of integrity and value, and I would never like, never do that to my counterpart. Yeah. But with that, I've heard. Not only did I love Tiffany, I still love Tiffany. Like I see, I, I, I mean, being a wife 16 and a half years, like and a woman, I know when a man it loves a woman. Like we know, just like y'all know when we love y'all. Yeah. And y'all communication. So I asked like a week or so ago, like, hey, if the opportunity ever presented itself for y'all to be able to reconcile or come back together again would you do it and your reply to me was <clears throat> my reply to you was that uh i never say never to anything because it, it it's it's hard to say never uh 
is not something that I think about. Um, it's not something that I go to bed at night like, oh, I wish I could me and Tiffany back together. I'm over that part right now. But I never say never, and I say it to you that I never say never, but I don't, I don't believe God is strong enough for that. And the reason I said that is because when I went back to California the first time, before the book came out, you know, we still chopping up, and I'm still in love with Tiffany and things like that. And then it, it even, even the relationship I was in at the time, I was kicking it with this person, but my mind was, my heart was still with Tiffany. And when I got the job back in California, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, you know, we're going to probably end up being back together. I'm going to be out here in California, which that's when the book came out. And that's when everything turned. Um, but nah, I don't, I don't, you know, that's the whole thing. My life after I got over all of this has been peaceful and pleasant. You know, the book brought me back into that. And uh, then I started having to fight for my name and things like that. But uh, yeah, when we was, I mean, while we were together, I mean, we had some ups and downs and here and there. Uh, very few arguments, according to it, nothing like that happened in the book. She was never in a holding tank in a chamber, you know, none of that stuff ever happened. Um, you know, if, you, if I lock you in the bedroom, why not climb out the window? This is the first floor, you know what I'm saying? You know, but it, it's just crazy. And then the, the choking yeah. only happened well, during yeah. the fun time. She, she, right? Well, not necessarily so, the fun time. She called it a choke when the incident that we had that, you know, she brought up, well, that brought up that when I so-called got arrested uh, was an incident where she had she she got a little jealous of uh, a female that had texted me and she hit basically I wouldn't give her the keys to the car because she was drunk and we had just got home from coming and she was drinking a lot that night and I wouldn't give her the uh, keys so she hit me in the back of the head with a pool stick and I did turn around because I wasn't expecting her to hit me because she had never hit me like that. So I walked, I told her to break all the mirrors in the car. Because she said, I'm going to break, I'm going to bust these cars one up. And I, you know, they was my cars. And so I told her, I said, I said, bust all the windows. I said, they got insurance on it. And so I turned around and go walk in the garage. I didn't think she was going to hit me down back in the head with a pool stick. And boy, oh, you, you ever see them cartoons with them? That's why they get hit. And they see that little thing. They, they see that little, little star. Man, when she hit me in the back of the head with that pool stick, I wasn't expecting that. And I was like, ooh. Oh. And then I saw stars. I mean, it was like for real. I said, man. And when she hit me in the back of the head with pool stick, I didn't know what hit me. And I had my knees bumping a little bit. And I was like, she just damn hit me. And so I did turn around and I grabbed her by the neck with one hand and put her on the wall. And I should have never did that, but I. I you know, and, and I did put on the wall. And when I put on the wall, boy, she she turned into a monster. Mm-hmm. And so I just trying to hold it and I held her down, but I ain't never hit her. I never slapped her or anything like that. So she, yeah, so I did do that. But the, any other token she was talking about, yeah, because she's, when you, when you, when you in that time with her, she's, she's, she's tiring. You know, and I, I, and my hand will be, I can't spank like that. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, I mean, but overall, I mean, being with a person almost seven years, you know, we we very seldom argue about, we very seldom argued about anything. Right. You know, she would always say when we was, you know, all the things I was doing, and she, and then if she see me, because I was kind of like this. I'm a husband. You know, some of the things I think she can do while I'm gone. So I was have to lead by example. So instead of me coming in the house fussing, mm-hmm. I would just walk in the house and start washing dishes and stuff, you know. And then as soon as I start washing dishes and stuff, she hear me. Next thing I know, I hear, <laughs> she turned on that vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and, uh, and I saw always joke with her and say, I don't see no lines in this in, the, in this car. You just turn that thing on and let it run. Turn it on. Yeah, yeah, just let it run. Out, you know. And then the thing that was funny about it, because it was so, man, I'm telling you, we had so much fun, even with stuff like that. And I would go upstairs and like, Look at her like, man, you ain't vacuuming nothing up here. And then she would like put her arms up. That's like, cause she don't say come here. She just put her arms up like this right here. And that means she want a hug. Mm-hmm. So you go over and hug. And she would always say, you such a great husband. You do this, you do this. And she would always say, don't worry about any of this. She said, I'm laying in the bed writing these jokes. These jokes going to make us millions. And I'm going to get you a Maria so you ain't got to do this no more. And she would say that all the time. But you know, the thing about it, man, I'm telling you, we, when I read that book, I was like, what is this? We had some arguments and disagreements on most times she was drunk. But other than that, man, all we did was laugh and talk around the house together. You know? Yeah. It was it was it, it was it, it wasn't bad. And I mean bad. I never I not and, and anytime you get a woman that never tells you no, you ain't got you know. That's I tell people all the time, you know, when I was younger, you know, I was running around here, running around there, you know. But that was the first time I was in a relationship with someone 
that I was committed to. Because I'm here, I'm too tired of doing it. <laughs> you know, the, the word says, yeah. don't let your men leave unsatisfied. Yeah. So, you, you know. I would, some mornings I would get up to go to work. Now, this is God's son <laughs> truth. I have never seen somebody like do this stuff. She would call home from the, you know, she would get home from 2.30 to come to school. She would ask me stuff like, and she would think, I, you know, she would be like, I'm going to do this five times before you go to work. She would set her clock and wake up and I'm like no I'm thinking to myself okay 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 you know I would get ready to leave go to work sometimes she's like where are you going and I'm like I'm going to go to work you, you, I, you ain't going to take that out of here and give it to somebody else I, you know and that was a lot I'm like man I, man, come on I got to go to work you know uh, call you at lunch time you ain't going to go to lunch with nobody no no, hey, especially when we stayed across the street to the high rise. We stayed across the street from the high rise, but boy, it was. Yeah, I, I never was. You know, I never. I very seldom had to say. I very seldom got no to anything. You could. You was the one trying to say no. In chapter seven of your book, the time you were saying that, yes, Tiffany, you had said, and I know in our conversation, she never dreamt of being a wife. She dreamt of being yeah. a star. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And do you feel like that's what contributed to the breakdown of your marriage? Well, but she chose that life over the life that you and her had. Pretty much. I mean, she would say that. She would say stuff like that um, when she. Sometimes she would get upset, and then like at the end of our marriage, when she started, you know, I can kind of tell like when the money started coming in and she started making six figures, you know, close mm-hmm. to six figures and things like that. I can kind of tell. That you know William wouldn't have needed as much no more, mm-hmm. and uh, but she would always tell me stuff like you know you know well, William you know you know I love you but I never dreamed of being a wife I always dreamed of being a celebrity this is what I dreamed of and, you know and things like that in my mind I'm thinking okay well, whatever you know mm-hmm. I'm just gonna you know I would always tell her live a dream I got this man here mm-hmm. so uh, once that happened um, she came in one day and, I, and she said uh, I don't know if you. She texted me or whatever, but she said, pretty much told me, you're a good husband. I love you, but I just don't like you no more. Mm. You know? And uh, so that's pretty much, you know, and I stuck, I, I stayed there with her all the way until pretty much the divorce was final. Because I was hoping that. That it would change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, we still carried on every day the same way. When the divorce was final, I ended up moving to Pasadena. And I got an apartment. And I, I, I started moving my stuff there like a couple weeks before it was final. And then when I moved in the apartment, I, I actually slept in that apartment. I never put nothing up on the walls. I never, I, I slept on the sofa because the bed wouldn't put up. And I probably stayed in that apartment like that for like two months because I did I was miserable. Right. You know, and it wasn't miserable. I wasn't sitting there thinking like, who Tiffany and with and stuff like that. But when she would come home and fall asleep in the garage a little, you know, and with the garage door down, I worried about it so much and stuff like that. So, you know, um. That's a lot of nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I know, you know, through the course of a couple of weeks, you have, you do still have communication with Tiffany, and Tiffany does reach out to you still to this very day. Yeah. Because that's what I say, like the connection that you guys have, mm-hmm. I mean, it could be very much so like dang I really love William mm-hmm. but the life I live is permitting me from being the woman that he needs me to be you know cause she checked the message that I got yeah. from her like she was like hey did you make it home Yeah. like those are things that you send <clears throat> to someone that you're concerned with and that you care about cause after all this time you two very well would never y'all could go y'all separate ways and be gone and there'd never be a line of communication mm-hmm. even with or without these books that both of you have you know put out into the world yeah so you know tiffany still has love for you just as well as you still have love mm-hmm. for her and this is one of those situations that i feel like because of fame fortune and there's nothing wrong with having these goals and ambitions and dreams and desires, mm-hmm. but you have to make sure that it lines up with who you need to be yeah. to your mate as well. There's a uh, there's tons of celebrities that have a marriage and have their their dream and their vision, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So 
unfortunately, this is one of those things that, and you know, since we talk, I've not been like, oh my God, let's let's bash Tiffany, no. let's bash you. Like, no. I feel like this is an unfortunate situation that could have been a power move for both of y'all. Yes. Definitely. Like, y'all definitely right now should still be a power couple. She clearly, the, the things, the voice that she needs, her team is not going to be able to give that to her. The things that she needs in her, like with, with what she deals with mentally and, and, and physically and things like that, this is something that the person that loves you and cares about you yeah. is going to be able to provide. The, the, team, the team is there for business. Yeah. yeah, and then the thing about it, there, it, can, it can't, like I always tell people, even if even even if God put it in our hearts to be together, that cannot happen. Because um, if that cannot really happen, because if for that to happen, first thing you have to confess to God, and then the second thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to tell everybody the Lad Factory. You're gonna have to tell all these people that you you embellished or you you made up some of this stuff. You have to tell people, you know what? I lied and did this because if you can't do none of that. Then you got too many people on the backside, so that's why it's kind of like I got to the point where I just said, "Hey, I don't move. I moved on and things like that." And the reason, just like even when I wrote this book, I did not want to write the book, you know. But then when you divorce, you don't went through litigation and you don't came to an agreement. And then as soon as you come to agreement, you still hear and saying lies about. You know, my ex-husband made me you know, get a perm and my hair fell out. And I'm like, and then I get folks calling me, man, why you make my hair fall out? Why you did this? And I'm like, man, I ain't never made that woman get a perm. You know, I ain't never made her do none of this crap. Well, you wouldn't make it Tiffany do anything. I ain't she was, she was, she was, I was a little I said you yeah. were a servant. I was a, I was a husband slash caterer. You, you, you were, from everything I heard, and it was funny because when PR said earlier, she's like, I know you're going to bring up the fitterman aspect of it. How are you going to run that in our life? Yeah. Because that's what, what I see. So it, knowing the story outside and knowing, you know, that part of it, mm -hmm. I can't see you saying, hey, do this, do that. Tiffany's not the type that's going to be like, you can tell you one person, like, listen. No, I got emails. It is what like, it is. You know, you, you know, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, that's that role reversal for you. So what, um, let me ask you, how did you come up with the title of the book? Trust Lies in the Sea? Yes. Mainly when I was talking to some people and I was trying to figure out how to write a book and things like that. And I was talking to some, this guy and I was telling him about, you know, just talking about And then he was like, man, he said, he, he didn't really see anything that I was, you know, because I had so much stuff I was showing him that it, could, it was real negative right. uh, pictures you know, videos, audios, stuff that's real negative. And like I told him, I said, I just want to tell my side of the story uh, to sh and put a few pictures in there of some of the evidence that showed that that was that whole chapter uh, was embellished on me to make sales. Even with some of the emails that they turned over saying that I told you the ex husband was the chapter we needed. And every time I read this stuff, it feels like somebody stabbing me in my back deeper and deeper to make millions. And it made millions, you know what I'm saying? And every millions, it made me feel like they were just stabbing something deep in my back to make money off my back. Mm -hmm. Because that was the best part of the book, according to a bunch of people that were sending these emails, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. Um, Unfortunately yeah. for you, it yeah. was New York Times yeah. bestseller. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Multi-billions is what I said, definitely. Yeah. So, do you feel like now, after the past few years that you've been hush hush and not mm -hmm. spoken on this, how do you feel right now at this moment that you're able to verbally say these things? Do you feel like it's you know it's a weight off of your shoulders? Yes, it, 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 it honestly it kind of feels like people say, well, you're not you know you're not pushing the book, you're not doing this, you know, and it, it, might, it might get sold. I might sell it, you know, to a publisher that wants to do this. You know, sit down and put the market and all that stuff behind it. Uh, but it was a—it's kind of like when people talk about things when mm -hmm. you get to release something. It's like a it was found, and when I released it, it was like, oh, now I'm saying my side. Right. Maybe it ain't but a thousand people gonna read it, but I said my side. Right. You know, and I—you know—I feel good about what I said because I didn't go hard. There's some things that I didn't put in there, and it's you know because technically, when you love someone. In my opinion, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not, yeah, you're not gonna try to hurt them. 
You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to put nothing in there to be like vindictive. Right. You know, I didn't want to, or like, you know, she put on something with Gary Owens about she got, she she did the grapefruit scene on me and that's how she got a Corvette and all this other stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying to myself, man. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I just I didn't I didn't want to say I didn't want to say any of this negative stuff. There are some you things know? that we didn't even share yeah. on there. Okay, so what do you want the people to take away from this interview? Um, uh, just pretty much just like the last page of that book pretty much tells you, uh, you know, I'm William Stewart. I'm not Eric Uh I have a life. I have kids. I have a, um, you know. You know, I, I have a legacy that I'm, I'm trying to leave too, and I don't want my legacy to be tainted by the last black unicorn right. because that is not me. That didn't happen, and uh, you know, if it, you know, if it did happen, why did, why why put X up? Just put the name. Right. You know, if it did happen, so I don't know. It just it was just like, man, don't you think about me, my kids, my family, my life? You know, my legacy. You know, you know, to me. When you love somebody, you don't. You're not yeah, gonna kill them no. like that. Right. Yeah. Which is why, again, I say I see the love. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong with it because yeah. I mean we all, you know, perfectly and perfect, perfect people. So things happen. There's, you know, there's doors of opportunity that open at times that may not be in the best interest of people that's around you, but you feel like that's your move at that time mm -hmm. and I feel like this is one of those things and these things happen whether we hear about it or not and with these errors you hear about a lot in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. so it is very um, stressful for mm -hmm. the entertainment industry when it comes to relationships and marriages which they do say hey like you might not want to get married you might want to this so I do commend those that are in that lifestyle that keep their marriages together because it's, it's difficult. It's difficult when you're out in the real world, oh, no let doubt. alone the entertainment industry. Yeah. How do you feel like this? Has this has this affected your personal relationship life? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it it's, it's been hard for me to um, fall in love or um, trust. Yeah. It's kind of like you know, it's been it's, it's been definitely hard. You know, I've I, you know, I, I was dating a, I, I was dating a good one, and she, she stuck by my side. She's real cool people, and we best of friends now. But it got to the point where, you know, my heart, you know, I, it would just went my heart. You know, you was going through the motions, and my heart was not in it. You know, it was like my heart was still in L.A. You know. I feel like your heart is still in L.A. <laughs> it's it's still, I ain't gonna say it's still in L.A., but it's you know. It's I will never, I will never, sure. I would never mm, want anything that negatively happen to her. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, when you really love someone, I would love for her to get married and be happy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's this yeah. thing you. That's you really love somebody. When yeah. ultimately, if you you can't be happy with me, yeah. I want you happy with someone. So yeah. Tiffany. Whichever page you're watching, know that this man is like, be happy. Yeah. I feel like, again, it's unfortunate. Yeah, because I'm happy. I got a golf you know cart, I mean? and I play golf. And I just stay at home and cook and enjoy our family. So and you don't I, want nobody, you don't want your significant other? If it happens, it happens. But I, if it happens, it happens, but I'm not going to rush into it. You got to be open. Yeah. It's been here. Like, you have to be open. That's all. So we got to be yeah. open, and we got to get past this. And this is part of you taking your steps to mm -hmm. moving forward to be able to open. Like you just said, like, two minutes ago, you had a great woman, but your heart just was not in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And do you deserve, you want Tiffany happy? Yeah. You deserve to be happy as well. And yeah. you know you can't you can't want and this is the thing in universe you can't want more for someone else than you want it for yourself. True. This is why we have this situation and why we sit here. Yes. Because you wanted more for Tiffany than you wanted for yourself. Yes. But the thing that I tell people even at work when I be talking to people about it, and somebody brought to my attention the other day some of the things I've got experience in life as far as the military, some of the some of the honor, some of the things I got a chance to experience even working in the movie industry. Uh, being executive at Paramount, I've lived so much of a good life that, and even being married, even being married to Tiffany, I mean, it was, it was, it was a lot of good, man, I, I got so many good memories, that was the hardest thing about writing this mm -hmm. book or even going to court, because you got to relive mm -hmm. all these things, you got to produce it to the lawyers, mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and you, sometimes you cry because you be like, 
man, I remember we had a good time doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this. And you got all these pictures, and you'd be like, damn, ain't none of that in that book. Right. You know, and that's the harmful part of it. But she just glad. I was just glad to, um, if she's if she can be happy, I would be happy because actually, you know, I was happy. I I was very happy at the time. And it's kind of like in my mind, it's like, well, if I fall in love and get happy again, that's great. If not, I had it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that's what I feel. Because the times we was together, besides the little stuff we had to learn to live through and, and dealing with the issues she had, I was happy. Right. You know, so it's kind of like, well, I felt it. I know what it feels like to be you happy with someone. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, I feel yeah. like you definitely, we're going to be manifesting yeah. that you absolutely get to feel it again. Yeah. You seem like you're, I've definitely not seen because I've had the pleasure to dialogue with you and we definitely yeah. will still keep in contact. Like you're an amazing man. There's not a lot of amazing men that stand up and do a lot of the things that you have done that mm -hmm. go through the storm and weather the storm with the situation that mm -hmm. you Tiffany went through and then to come out and really attempt to try to do that again mm -hmm. outside it's you know it says it speaks volumes about your character and who you are mm -hmm. as as a man and how you would handle your your mate mm -hmm. I mean so you know doing a lot of hey baby do you you know what? What makes you happy? Whatever makes you happy makes me happy. Every dream. You know what I mean? Every so dream. I got. I, 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 I got these bills over here. We might, you know, I might struggle and, and, and pay this one and pay that one, but you just live your dream. Right. That's what I like to do. Live your dream. I, I, I'm gonna I'm I'm go hustle. I go get this. You know. And and look what Tiffany said. Hey, God is good. You know, all, all the time. time. So. And I, when I see stuff she does, so I'm, I'm, I, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm proud because I'll be like, yeah, I help you do that. Yeah, yeah I help yeah. you get to that. Right. And I'm and I'm sure she's there. I'm well, I sure she's she ain't gonna say it out in the public. But I know deep. I know deep. I, well, I can tell you this. I know deep down inside, she's saying that she lived it too. Yeah. She. I know mm -hmm. she know in her heart that she had a good one. Yeah. I know she know that. Yeah. I know for a fact she knows that. And then nothing as far as the heart, why yeah. the relationships. You know, when you get that that one, you just know. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just know. Yeah. And as long as both of you guys are still in the land of the living, there's, I'm going to say it, there's mm -hmm. always an opportunity for this thing to come back regardless. Mm -hmm. And we never see, even if you don't foresee it or, you know, because mm -hmm. I mean, we don't see, we don't really bank on what we don't see. I don't see that in the future, but I see that she stays in communication maybe, with Maybe you. nursing. Maybe, so, maybe, who knows? Maybe we get to be 70, 60, 70 maybe, years old. Maybe, maybe nursing all the time. Yeah. You know, maybe we might be in the rockers next to each other one time saying, you know what, baby, we living like this now. We can't even do it, but we can still, you know. <laughs> but maybe the nursing home stage, maybe the nursing home stage, but I don't think any time before that. Listen, you better say we have not because we have not. Okay? Yeah, so, yeah. I want to tell you, I definitely um, I'm grateful that, again, that you decided to come out here and it's red wine. sit, look, yeah. red wine, and I, I, we made, look, thank you, there, we made the awesome Kool-Aid, and I just made that Kool-Aid, I don't know, it might have been a little tart if I made it, because all I seen was calories, baby, Oh, right? you put, oh that's, oh, that's syrup. And so you, you let a kid make Kool-Aid, because oh, <laughs> I, I was going to let an 11-year-old make it, I was like, hey, nobody <laughs> goes, you going to make some Kool-Aid, it need to be a kid, because they the sugar monster, oh, yeah, okay? Oh. Like oh, it is sugar free. See, I see it. It ain't got all the way down the glass. So, we're going to close out. want to say, everyone on social media world, our platforms, thank you. But before we do close out, tell them where they can find this amazing book. Oh, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, Amazon, uh, just type in Trust Lies in the Seat. And also, you can just type my name in Amazon, William Stewart. It'll pop right up. And your social media. Yeah, and my social media. Will, yes, I am. Uh, yeah, you can go on Instagram, Will, yes, I am. Uh, there's a link on it in, in it that you can uh, order the book also from Amazon. Everybody, go follow Will, yes, I am, a good man. That's what <laughs> <laughs> to somebody and other ladies looking, somebody's gonna be looking and be DMing me messages like, Where's Lady Mac? Like, <laughs> no, probably got the book. At, 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 home, at home, tinkling around, right. tinkling around the house. Like, Tiny, you like to go ski? Yeah, but yes. <laughs> and I'll pay for the first date. <laughs> so that's what we that's what we doing. We'll be on the golf course. Right. And then listen, she <laughs> might be a golfer too. Who knows, you know? Yeah. So good. So, girls, we see y'all. Thank you again, Thank you. William, for being here. It was it was a pleasure. I am happy.
happy that you were able to, you know, release, release some of that yeah, baggage. Yeah. You definitely you look like you have released. Yeah, yeah. Smiling more from from being nervous in the beginning and oh, when yeah. you got here. And I feel like like I commend you also for not bashing yeah. Tiffany and not being there. Some things we talked about you and I that you didn't disclose well, and I respect you my bowels for were that. My, like you I always I mean? say, my bowels is real. So right. I, I can't if my bowels is real I can't change right. them. Right now for a book. Right. And then the, the love. This is love because yeah. love supersedes out. Yeah. This is what love looks like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, really. So I some know. some woman is going to be, yeah. she's going to be happy. It's going to be a blessing for somebody. And she's going to be a blessing in return. And who knows? Just invite me to the wedding. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna get William White Ray. We gonna get him husband up again. Okay. All right. Good night, you guys. See you next week. Oh, well, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was.